today we're going to be talking about the snowball method and I just want to explain this a little further into detail. I did talk about this a little bit whenever I recorded the video about paying off our credit cards, but um, I did kind of touch on all of the other methods out there, so I just want to focus on just the snowball method. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So the snowball method is a means of paying off debt, and the way that you do it is you pay off your debts from smallest to largest. So first things first, you have to order your debts from smallest balance to largest balance. So that is what I have done here. I have a cell phone installment, I have credit card one, I have credit card two, and I have a car. Um, if you have a house, that would go in here. Obviously the balance is, you know, typically a little bit higher on mortgages. So that would go at the bottom obviously, but you just list them from smallest to largest, no matter how it's cut. So I have included in here a cell phone installment plan. So a lot of people tend to think that those are not debts, but installment plans are 100% debts. They just usually have 0% interest and they're tied up in your phone bill, but you're still paying for that debt because you can't leave the company generally without paying off the debt. Or if you try to do that, they're going to send you know, send it to collection. So they're going to get their money no matter what. So therefore, if you owe someone, that is definitely a debt. Um, so I have a cell phone installment on here. The minimum payment is $30 a month. Typically, like I said, those are wrapped up in cell phone bills. The balance is 200. So this is our first balance. Credit card one, minimum payment is $100 a month and our balance is 500. Credit card two, our minimum payment is $200 a month and our balance is 1000. Car, minimum payment is $400 a month and our balance is 5000. Yes, these are listed in order from smallest minimum payment to the largest minimum payment, but again, we're only focusing on the balance. Snowball method is paying off debts from smallest balance to largest balance. 200, 500, 1,000, 5,000. So let's talk a little bit more about how you might go about doing this. So um, let's say you're paying $30 a month for your cell phone installment plan. So in order to successfully do the snowball method, the goal of this is to attack your smallest debt, which is a cell phone installment, while paying minimum payments on your other debts. So obviously this sounds easier said than done, but that takes a lot of budgeting, a lot of increasing your income, a lot of decreasing your expenses. You have to open up some extra money in your budget. You have to free some money up because otherwise you won't, you know, get ahead if you're still you know, struggling to pay the minimum payments on your debts or anything like that. You have to sometimes take drastic measures and pick up another job or cut out your cable or cut out your internet or whatever the case is so you can have extra money to use to attack your smallest balance. So let's say you have done those things and you have freed up some money in your budget. You are putting all of your time and energy into this cell phone installment plan. The balance is $200. We want this gone immediately. So once you have attacked this and you have gotten an extra, you know, $200 um, within your budget in order to get rid of this installment plan, you then cancel this out. And then you move on to the credit card one, which is our next balance. So the thing that you need to remember though, and the way that it gets a little bit tricky, the whole purpose of this is to grow your snowball. So at this point, um, before you paid off your cell phone installment plan, you were putting $30 a month minimum towards your cell phone plan. Once you knock out this whole debt, you then take this $30 and roll it into your next debt. So now, in addition to the other money that you are finding within your budget, you still are able to put at least $130 towards your credit card one. Why? Because you were taking that $30, you were rolling it into the credit card one minimum payment, and you were putting at least $130 towards that debt every single month. Again, it all depends on what you're willing to sacrifice in order to pay it off quickly, but you know at the, at the least, once you finish paying off the cell phone plan, you have at least $30 that you can put towards your credit card one. So essentially you would be putting at least 130 a month. Again, it's all up to you 
on how quickly you can get that paid off. But let's say it happens rather quickly. So once you cancel out credit card one, you then have $130 that you can add to credit card two. So now you're up to $330. Your snowball has grown to $330. Get what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? At this rate, you are putting $330, $330 minimally towards your balance of $1,000. And of course, you know, let's say you're the only money that you have is the $330 to put towards debt. Let's say you're going through, you know, a rocky couple of months and you haven't gotten any calls back to work your part-time job or you haven't been able to decrease your expenses anymore, you know that the minimum you have to put towards credit card two is $330 a month. What that means is in about three or four months, you're gonna have this $1,000 balance paid off. And that's the thing that I'm trying to emphasize today. You may not be able to pay off six credit cards in two months like we did, and I'm not encouraging anybody to do it. I'm not advocating. That's not the goal here. The goal here is to let you guys know that no matter how you slice it, if you follow the snowball method, you are going to see some progress. Again, it all depends on what you're willing to sacrifice. I was willing to sacrifice my travels. I gave up travels for, I've given up travels, I would like to think. Uh, partially, you know, I do, uh, you know, I've gone a place or two, but I don't really consider, I mean, that's traveling, but that's not the rate that I used to travel. So in my head, I've given up travel. We had to give up going out to eat. That was a little bit difficult, still is a little bit difficult. Those were the things that we were willing to sacrifice, which we probably should have done forever ago instead of traveling here and there and just neglecting our debts. But anyway, it all depends on what you're willing to sacrifice. But again, it will only take about three, four months to knock out this balance at $330 a month either way. Once you do that, you are then taking this $330 and you're adding it to your car payment. So every month you're now paying 400 plus 330. So that is $730 that you are putting towards your car. That's almost a that's almost double the payment that you're putting on your car. So if the balance is only 5000, I mean the math is pretty easy. You just see how many times 730 is going to go into 5000 and that'll tell you when you're going to have the car paid off at the minimum rate. Again, it all depends on what you're willing to sacrifice. Can you pick up another job? How many other? I mean, can you sell some stuff? Can you decrease your expenses in any other way to make this go by quicker? It all depends on what you're willing to sacrifice. But at the minimum, at this rate, if you're following the snowball method, you will have about $730 to put towards your car every single month. Again, knocking out a $5,000 balance is going to be pretty easy if you're putting double the car payment. I mean, you know, doubling up on your car payment, essentially. Again, if you had a house and, and your mortgage or minimum payment was, let's say, $1,000 a month, and your balance was, I don't know, 50000 What this means is, once you knock out the car, you can then add that 730 to the 1000 And at this rate, you are putting $1,730 towards your mortgage every single month, minimally. Of course, that's not double the payment, but almost, again, what are you willing to sacrifice to get your house paid off quicker? And this is what all of us who are following the Dave Ramsey plan are doing. A lot of us get part-time jobs. A lot of us cut cable and do things that seem taboo. A lot of us, you know, again, just increase our work on ways to increase our income, like selling things and work on ways to continue to decrease our expenses. I plan to increase my income and also decrease our expenses because I am going to be trying to well i'm going to i've been going to a coupon class for forever like not i have been going to but i have been planning to go to the next one that the lady hosts for a long time she's a really good couponer and so it's going to be held at the beginning of 2018 sometime so i'm going to go and see what i can work out there again if it's a little bit too overwhelming and i don't feel like being bothered i'll probably you know not do it but if i can save money i'm going to save money so that those are the things that my husband and i are planning to do at this point you know when our car is paid off 
in December, we will just have our student loans. And so in order to get those knocked out quickly, even though our snowball is going to be up by January, it's going to be up to like 4,000, 5,000. I mean, like it's going to be up there by the time January rolls around, by the time we knock out the car payment um, and the whole balance, our snowball is then going to increase. We still need to work on ways to increase our income and decrease our expenses so that we can knock out the student loans as quickly as possible even though we're already going to be putting a good chunk of change towards you know our student loans already we want them gone faster so we're going to have to do other things so that will probably be definitely finding some more jobs not different jobs but additional jobs and little side hustles and things to do so anyway this is how the snowball method works i did read or hear um someone say a couple of days ago that the snowball method was i think she said something about like paying off debts from i think she said highest interest and i almost fell out because she said this on you know in front of a body of people and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> like people are going to think that that's how you do the snowball method and it's definitely not so i'm here to clarify this is the snowball method explained i hope that this was helpful I did try to explain it the best way that I knew how. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. I did have something else to say. Oh, the one thing that I was going to mention is um, bills that are in, that are kind of lying dormant in collections. There's a lot of controversy about that. Some people say, you know, grab those debts and, and line them up here. Some people say just leave them alone. I, I'm not I don't know I'm not here to clarify but I'm just saying if you had a medical bill um, in collections and the balance was let's say three thousand dollars you would then slide that in here to pay that off if you were going to do that again that's a lot of controversy out there I don't know which way you might want to go um, but just saying I think that's about picking whatever you want to pick. I mean, I don't, I really don't know the answer to that. Might want to go to Dave Ramsey's site and look that up and see what he has to say about that. Because I think that is, you know, personally, I would say it's kind of like personal preference, preference in regards to what you want to do about debts that may be in collections. But again, the snow, snowball method works best when we're talking about these revolving debts, such as the ones here. Um, obviously, debts in collections are not revolving debts, but either way, they still are debts that need to be paid. So like I said, might want to go seek an expert's advice on that because I'm not the girl to answer that question because there's a lot of controversy out there. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.